In this episode of CMS Country Profile, we profile the one and only Connie Smith and explore the life and times of this one-of-a-kind artist. Connie Smith was born Constance June Metter to parents Wilma and Hobart Metter in Elkhart, Indiana on August 14, 1941. Her parents were originally from West Virginia, and when Smith was five months old, the family returned there. They would later move to Dinganon, Ohio. Her biological father was an alcoholic and he was abusive to Smith's family. There were some tough times that I went through as a young child, she told an interviewer. Her mother divorced her biological father when she was a child and remarried to Tom Clark. Smith's stepfather brought eight children to the marriage, while Metter brought five, including Smith. The couple later had two more children together, totaling to 15 children. Smith was influenced by music in her childhood. Her stepfather played mandolin, while her brother played fiddle, and her other brother played guitar. On Saturday nights, the family would tune into the Grand Ole Opry radio broadcast. She took up the guitar following a lawnmower accident, which nearly cut her leg off. While in the hospital recovering, she was given a guitar and learned how to play different chords. Smith did not perform publicly until high school when a friend invited her to sing Connie Francis's pop hit My Happiness. With only one-tenth of a point behind the valedictorian, Smith graduated from Salem Liberty High School in 1959 as the class salutatorian. Following graduation, she worked as telephone operator in Lowell, Ohio. She also worked as a drugstore clerk, a dental assistant and in a grocery store. At age 19, she married her first husband, Jerry Smith. Smith's husband encouraged her singing and she began performing with more frequency. Her professional performance was at the 1962 Washington County Fair. She then briefly joined the cast of the Saturday Night Jamboree, a local country music television program. Smith was then fired following her first performance, later theorizing it was because she was pregnant. She then successfully auditioned for and landed a spot on a similar program for WSAZ-TV. Despite performance opportunities, Smith intended to remain a housewife and mother. In August 1963, Smith entered a talent contest at the Frontier Ranch Country Music Park near Columbus, Ohio. Performing Gene Shepard's I Thought of You, Smith won the talent contest and five silver dollars. Judging the contest was country singer-songwriter Bill Anderson, who was instantly impressed by her voice. At first I thought they were playing a record and she was lip-syncing it, he later explained. In January 1964, Smith ran into Anderson again at a country music package concert in Canton, Ohio. He invited her to perform with him on Ernest Tubbs' Midnight Jamboree program in Nashville, Tennessee. When Smith performed on the program in March 1964 she found out that she would not be performing with Anderson, but instead with Ernest Tubb. Impressed by her performance, Loretta Lynn introduced herself after the show and gave her career advice. After performing on the program, Smith returned to Nashville that made to record demos by Anderson that he planned on pitching to other country artists. Anderson's manager Hubert Long brought the demo recording to the RCA Victor label where producer Chet Atkins heard it. Also impressed by her vocals, Atkins offered Smith a recording contract, and she eventually signed on June 24, 1964. After signing Smith to RCA, Chet Atkins found himself too busy with other artists. Instead, he enlisted Bob Ferguson to act as Smith's producer. The pair developed a close professional relationship and Ferguson remained her producer until she departed from RCA. I couldn't have asked for a better person to work with. He is one of the finest men I've ever known, Smith later said. Smith's first session took place on July 16, 1964, where she recorded four songs. Three of these tracks were written by Bill Anderson, who agreed to write material for Smith. 
Two days later, Smith made her debut on the Grand Ole Opry. One of the four songs recorded on July 16 was Once a Day, which was chosen to be Smith's debut single. Once a Day was released in August 1964 and reached number one on the Billboard magazine Hot Country Singles chart on November 28. It remained at the number one position for eight weeks between late 1964 and early 1965. Once a Day became the first debut single by a female country artist to reach number one. For nearly 50 years the single held the record for the most weeks spent at number one on the Billboard Country chart by a female artist. Smith started performing more regularly with Once a Day's success. Bill Anderson briefly served as her manager, but was replaced by Charlie Lamb. Smith made her first network television appearance in October 1964 on ABC's The Jimmy Dean Show. In March 1965, RCA Victor released her self-titled debut album and also reached the number one spot, spending a total of seven weeks at the top of the Billboard Top Country Albums chart. Dan Cooper of All Music gave the disc a positive reception and described Smith as a down-home Streisand fronting the Lennon sisters. Bill Anderson fulfilled his promise to RCA Victor and continued writing Smith's next single releases. Producer Bob Ferguson and steel guitar player Weldon Myrick created a high and punchy production that Ferguson thought would sound pleasing on car radios. I thought it was an awfully thin sound, but it wound up being very popular, Myrick recalled. In 1965, RCA issued Smith's follow-up single penned by Anderson titled Then and Only Then, which reached number four on the Billboard Country Songs chart. It was followed by another Anderson penned top ten single called I Can't Remember. In October 1965, the latter song appeared on Smith's second studio album, Cute N Country. Although she disliked the name of the LP, it became her second disc to top the Billboard Country Albums chart. She had further top five Billboard country singles through early 1966 with Anderson's Nobody But A Fool, Would Love You, and Priscilla Mitchell's If I Talk To Him. In 1965, Smith also became a member of the Grand Ole Opry radio show. In 1966, Ferguson felt pressured from RCA headquarters to market Smith's sound toward middle-of-the-road country pop material. Smith was against the pop production but nevertheless agreed to try it. The pair did several sessions featuring a string instrumentation. The new style appeared on her next studio releases Born to Sing, 1966, and Downtown Country, 1967. Both albums featured full orchestras in the background and cover versions of singles by pop artists of the time. Featured on the LPs were the singles Ain't Had No Lovin' and The Huttons All Over, which both reached the Billboard Country Top 5. During this time, Smith also appeared in several country music vehicle films, where she performed many of her current hit recordings. In 1966, she appeared in the film's second fiddle to a steel guitar and the Las Vegas Hillbillies, the latter of which starred Jane Mansfield. In 1967, she appeared in The Road to Nashville and Hell on Wheels. Smith's touring schedule also increased. In 1966, she formed her own touring band called The Sundowners and later married the band's guitar player, Jack Watkins. In February 1967, Smith the budget RCA Camden subsidiary label released Smith's next studio LP titled Connie in the Country. The LP included covers of popular country recordings of the era and a new single by Smith that reached the top 20 called Cry, Cry, Cry. In May 1967, RCA released an album of songs written solely by Bill Anderson called Connie Smith Sings Bill Anderson. Smith later commented that, it was an honor, not a favor to record an album of all Anderson tunes. It included covers of Anderson's own hits such as City Lights and That's What It's Like To Be Lonesome. Included on the album was Cincinnati, Ohio, which Smith released as a single and brought the song to the Billboard Country Top 5. 
Its success would later inspire the city of Cincinnati, Ohio to declare their own Connie Smith Day in June 1967. Smith remained at her commercial zenith through 1967 with a continued series of top 10 recordings. Her further hits included that I'll Come Runnin', Burning a Hole in My Mind, Baby's Back Again and Run Away Little Tears. Three of these recordings were included on Smith's 1967 album, I Love Charlie Brown, which reached the country LP's top 20. By 1968, Smith had reached the height of her career. She was making multiple appearances on film and television while also attempting to balance touring with a family life. The pressures of various responsibilities stressed Smith to a point where she nearly left her career. In 1968, she discovered Christianity which brought solace to her personal and professional life. Ultimately, she chose to continue with her career and recorded for RCA every few months. However, she cut back her touring schedule. She devoted the remainder of her time to family life and made efforts to appear on more Christian music programs. She worked alongside ministers Billy Graham and Rex Humbard. She also appeared on several Christian television shows. With Smith's commitment to RCA, the label continued releasing new albums and singles with regularity. With her new religious convictions, Smith also made it a priority to include gospel recordings on her secular albums. During this period, Smith also teamed up with country singer-songwriter Nat Stuckey to record two duet studio albums. The idea was crafted by Smith's producer, Bob Ferguson, and Stuckey's producer, Felton Jarvis. Both men thought the artist's voices would blend well. The duo's first duet sessions produced a cover of Sonny James's Young Love, which reached the top 20 of the Billboard Country Songs chart. Their first album of the same name featured covers of country and pop songs of the era. In the early 1970s, Smith started recording more songs penned by Dallas Frazier. The pair had become close friends, which prompted Frazier to write songs for Smith that reflected situations in her personal life. Both Smith and Frazier described her 1970 single Where Is My Castle as being autobiographical of her recent marital troubles. Anybody knows that it's cathartic to sing how you feel about things, Smith later said. Where Is My Castle reached the top 20 of both the Billboard and RPM Country singles charts. In 1971, RCA released Smith's cover of Don Gibson's Just One Time. Backed by a large rhythm section, the recording reached number two on the Billboard and RPM country charts, becoming her most commercially successful single of the 1970s. Yet, her further monument releases reached progressively lower positions on the country chart between 1978 and 1979. Furthermore, Smith had five children by this point and felt pressured to be at home with her family. Ultimately, Smith decided to leave her country music career entirely to focus on raising her children and tending to her religious needs. For three years, Smith remained in semi-retirement, committing only to occasional performances at the Grand Ole Opry, where she remained a member. At the Opry, she only performed gospel songs. However, she decided to return to her career in 1983. She re-signed with Monument Records, but left after label filed for bankruptcy. Instead, singer and songwriter Ricky Skaggs helped her secure a new recording contract to Epic Records. The first single, A Far Cry From You, 1985, was written by alternative country artist Steve Earle. It reached number 71 on the Hot Country Songs chart. One day in the mid-1990s, Smith was at her home talking to one of her daughters on the phone. After telling her mother what she was going to do that night, her daughter asked Smith what her plans for that night were. Because she did not have anything fun planned, Smith lied so her daughter wouldn't have to worry about her. After the conversation ended, Smith realized that she didn't need her own children worrying about her at the start of their adult lives and decided that it was time to return to her career. 
with country artist Marty Stewart, whom she later married in 1997, acting as the album's main producer, Smith signed a recording contract with Warner Brothers Records in 1996. Although the label preferred her to record an album of duets, Smith decided to go by her own terms and record a solo studio album. In October 1998, she released her second self-titled studio album. It consisted of 10 tracks, nine of them co-written by both Smith and Stewart. Smith's 1998 project attracted limited commercial attention, but was given critical praise for its traditional and contemporary style. Also in 1998, Smith made a second cameo appearance in a film, portraying a singer at the rodeo dance in the High Low Country starring Woody Harrelson and Billy Crudup. In November 2008, Smith joined the cast of Marty Stewart's television series The Marty Stewart Show, which aired on the RFD TV network every Saturday night. The 30-minute program featured traditional country music performed by both Stewart and Smith, as well as radio personality Eddie Stubbs. The show stopped airing on RFD TV in 2014. In August 2011, Smith released her first new solo recording in 13 years entitled Long Line of Heartaches via Sugar Hill Records. The record was produced by Marty Stewart and included five songs written by the pair. Harlan Howard, Costas, Johnny Russell, and Dallas Frazier also wrote tracks that were included on the disc. In August 2021, Smith's next studio album was released on the Fat Possum label titled The Cry of the Heart. It was the third project produced by Stewart and her first album of new material in 10 years. The New York Times described the cry of the heart to evoke the traditional styles that recall Smith's 60s-era recordings. It was Smith's first album since 1976 to reach a charting position on Billboard, peaking on the current album sales chart following its release. Smith has been married four times. In 1961, she married Jerry Smith, a faro analyst at the Interlake Iron Corporation in Beverly, Ohio. They had one child together, born on March 9, 1963, named Darren Justin. In the late 1970s, Darren went to Europe to become a missionary, he is currently a psychologist. In the mid-1960s, the couple divorced and Smith married the guitarist in her touring band, Jack Watkins. They had a son before separating nearly a year after marrying. Shortly afterward, Smith married telephone repairman Marshall Haynes. In the early 1970s, Haynes frequently toured with Connie on her road show. The couple had three daughters. After divorcing Haynes in the early 1990s, Smith stated that she would never marry again. However, on July 8, 1997, she did get married for the fourth time, this time to her producer, country artist Marty Stewart. Stewart began producing her after writing songs for Smith's 1998 comeback album. Stewart described encountering Smith 26 years earlier, after attending her concert, I met Connie when I was 12 years old. She came to the Indian Reservation in my hometown of Philadelphia, Mississippi, to work at a fair. She hasn't changed a bit. She looked great then and she looks great now. Stewart said he told his mother then that he was going to marry Connie Smith. Smith explains how they have sustained their marriage, make the Lord the center, and commit. Smith revealed in a New York Times interview that she had been diagnosed with COVID-19 in February 2021. She was hospitalized, developing sepsis and pneumonia. She eventually made a full recovery. They asked me if my heart stopped, did I want to be revived, and I said, of course, I don't want to be a COVID statistic, she told the Nashville scene, 